Hey everybody, so today we have in here for data recovery, we have a Samsung hard drive and we just want to talk about kind of the steps that we go through for data recovery and really what you can do in any type of uh, situation. He plugs it in, um, he can't read his data and he does smell there's some type of burning sensation on there. Right whenever you hear something like that, that means there's usually some, uh, some bad component on the motherboard. And you're wondering where is the motherboard and why is there a motherboard actually on this drive? So there is obviously the hard drive here and you need to plug um, the drive into something, right? So the drive has a USB port or it could be maybe a USB to a SATA port or it could be something else to, to power on the drive um, because the drive doesn't just work when you plug it in because it's just a bunch of mechanical parts. You need something to tell the mechanical parts where to go, how to read the data and everything else like that. And that is actually something that's called um, a ROM or BIOS chip that you can actually swap on these ones and that does have the OS and everything on it and you can make a drive work. In this particular case, that's all we have to do. We don't have to re-upload any firmware or do anything special to that. We can just swap out the ROM onto another board if we have it, like we have this one here, and then it should just work, right? There shouldn't be any issues with it. Yep, so we can either we can definitely do that. That will be one way of fixing it, or we can obviously do a repair on the board. In this video, since we do have the board actually here and we have an exact replica donor board, we can just swap it out and that should be working totally no problem. So um, now the thing is when you swap it out and you swap up the BIOS chip and then you get the power on, um, there's a lot of other issues that can occur. You, can, you might hear a grinding noise, you might hear a clicking noise, which um, would indicate that there is also a mechanical issue with the drive. So even after all the work, you can still have that problem. And uh, we want to make sure that we avoid that, but there's no way to know until you do this work first, you make sure that the power isn't going to be a problem first, and then you deal with the mechanical issue later. And if that is the, and then if that is the case, you do have a mechanical issue or anything else like that, you need to hook it up to more of data recovery tools like a professional one. Like we have like a PC3000, or um, obviously we have to do head replacements. You see the place of the clean rooms, controlled area. Now, um, we have been getting a lot of drives in also that people have opened their drives before and they try to work on them themselves. Um, that is definitely a problem. If you really are serious about getting your data off, we want to make sure that you don't want to open up your drive before you take it to any type of data recovery place. Because what that's going to do is you're definitely going to lower your chances significantly. If you open these up, I mean, you can, uh, if you damage the board or if you damage the BIOS chip, that's definitely a problem. Um, if you remove any serial numbers, those are big problems. If you remove that sticker, then you can't tell really what the drive is. That's a big problem. Um, also, if you open up this actual mechanical piece of the drive, there's lots of uh, warranty seals on them and there's lots of air filters on them that you don't want to damage that dust in there or um, any debris and maybe possibly damage the platters or damage the heads further than they already are damaged. So if you really are serious about it and you really want your data, definitely go with a place like us. We do lots of data recoveries. We have, we have mail-ins for lots of data recoveries and we have all the tools here and uh, we like to explain to you guys as best as we possibly can. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and look under the microscope at both these boards and we're going to go take a look at the difference and see really what we can do to swap it out. And then from there, if everything looks good, we'll just swap out the BIOS chip and then we'll go ahead and connect it and see if it works. All right. So we have the board out here and we see that there's damage here. And now it does look like that this maybe have been uh, worked on or something has been actually removed for it. And you can compare it to our donor one over here. Now what we want to do is uh, we just want to swap out the BIOS chip because we just want to avoid any other problems that the other PCB may have and then we can really just uh, uh, go from there. All right, so we did swap it out and you saw that process now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go connect it, our drive here, and I have a USB connection. And we did seal it. What you want, you definitely wanna make sure that you put the screws in. Um, I don't need to really tell you guys that, right? If you put the screws in, it needs to power on because there's lots of power connectors that could do go on here, like, uh, like for instance there. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in. And I don't want to really share the screen. Here's a drive. You see that blinking? And if you heard that noise on, on my thing, the thing did come up here. And it's going to say, it looks like it says Samsung, but I don't want to show the, the data of this. But I'm going to just show you guys in our directory 
at least uh, what we have here. So we do see this is the Samsung drive. This is the one terabyte one that we have uh, hooked up there. And you can see that's very full. It has, <laughs> has a lot of data on it. I don't want to click on it, obviously, for, for confidentiality uh, purposes. But um, we do have it here. At least it's going to we need to do a transfer right away. And what we want to do and what we want to do, too, we never want to put the data back on the same drive or just give it as a working drive like this, because this is a drive that has a problem. And you don't want to have a bigger problem when you put the data, especially this one has about, what, I think it's, it's 205 gigs of 931, so it's about one terabyte drive like with almost 800 gigs of data. You don't want to put the data back on or give a drive like this back to a client. You always want to put on definitely a good 100% working drive. Will not This will not happen again, and we always like to recommend to customers, uh, especially to back up the data, make a double backup if you're not too sure, at least have a cloud backup and maybe local backup or two local backups, just to always have your data. And you know, we make lots of YouTube videos. We actually do have two hard drives here. If you actually saw our um, screenshot, if you go back to, we have a YouTube, then we have a, a YouTube backup <laughs> because that's what it takes and that's what it, what it means if you're really serious about backing up your data. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and found this video very informative. And you can just see the process of it. We are very lucky and fortunate that the that the BIOSHIP swap was the only thing that we really needed to do for it to power on and that there was no any need to upload firmware or deal with any types of uh, problems with the mechanical issues because even when you do this, you could still have a problem after that and we didn't have to go through any software. This is a very clean and very straightforward data recovery. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Please subscribe for more content. We have lots of stuff about MacBook repairs, data recoveries, and anything else that you may guys may think. We do lots of software repairs and we're a tech shop, so we always want to show you guys anything that we see that's really cool or that's a big problem. So, well, we'll see you next one. Bye.